Hi everyone, this is Conservation Chick back again to talk about lionfish and why lionfish are a problem in our oceans. If you are excited about this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button if you want to be notified for all the rest of my videos. I'm going to try to post a video once a week and release them on Fridays from now on. So let's get started. Hi, I'm Conservation Chick. I want to fill the void and the misconception of thinking that you can't be more conservative. Come with me on this journey to living an ocean-friendly lifestyle and together becoming ocean-minded. So you might have heard about this gorgeous, exotic, yet invasive species called lionfish. So, what exactly are lionfish? You might recognize them as the red and white striped and spiny fishes of the oceans. They are venomous fish and they have 18 venomous spines. Their venomous spines are 13 dorsal spines, one spine on the leading edge of each pelvic fin, and three short spines in front of the anal fin. And don't worry, no one has ever been documented dying from a lionfish. They are actually from the Indo-Pacific region, and they are now officially an invasive species in the Caribbean waters and the Gulf of Mexico. You might be wondering how it got all the way over here from the Indo-Pacific region. And um, honestly, no one really knows how this happened. I have heard hypotheses mostly that it was an aquarium release. And the rest is history, but we can try to stop this problem. It, what makes these fish special, you could say, <laughs> and, and what makes them so skilled as an invasive species is that they can live in a very wide range of ecosystems. They have been seen in coral reefs, and they have even been seen up to 768 feet deep. That's really deep. <laughs> they have been documented across a broad range of habitats spanning from offshore reefs to hard bottom to shallow coastal estuaries and seagrass meadows, mangroves, and oyster reefs. So why should we care about this problem? Well, you might be wondering how lionfish can be so detrimental to a coral reef? Well, I'm going to tell you. Something uh, that is extremely important to a coral reef and what keeps it uh, moving along and healthy is its biodiversity and all the different types of fish that live in a coral reef. Each fish has a particular niche or niche that it does to keep the coral reef healthy and up to par. You have your parrotfish, which control the algae growth on the coral and make our sand. It's actually kind of cool to see a parrotfish swimming along in the water. It bites off a whole chunk of a coral. It only digests the algae and it excretes the coral skeleton as it swims by behind it in its path. It's really pretty to watch. And you also have your cleaning shrimp and sea urchins that graze over the coral and eat the algae. This prevents the algae from overgrowing and taking over the coral and so that it does not block the sunlight so it can keep performing photosynthesis for its food. It's all a healthy balance and lionfish are unfortunately disrupting this healthy equilibrium and healthy balance that keeps coral reefs going. So if lionfish continue to eat everything in its path, which it does, um, all that will be left is, well, lionfish and maybe sharks. <laughs> so eventually, after these niches are moved out and they no longer exist, the coral reefs will eventually die. Another reason why this species is so detrimental is because of its ability to outcompete other fish 
as well as reproduce at a very fast rate. They compete for food and space with overfished native fish who are already struggling, such as snapper and grouper, and scientists fear that lionfish will also start eating the helpful species I was talking about earlier, such as parrotfish and algae-eating fish, and allowing the seaweed and algae to overgrow on coral reefs, which is a very easy way to kill coral. So I found that a statistic is that it can actually reduce Atlantic reef diversity by up to 80%. This is largely because the lionfish has no predators at all. It is eating more fish than fish are eating them, and they are reproducing all year long. Actually, to give you an idea of how fast a lionfish can reproduce, um, according to NOAA, a mature female releases roughly 2 million eggs each year. So this is very fast, and that's a lot of eggs that they're popping out <laughs> all over the place. So in their native waters, lionfish are not a problem. They weren't a problem until they came over into the Caribbean and the um, Gulf of Mexico. So now they are, you can consider them official citizens of the um, Caribbean and the Atlantic waters. Unfortunately, since they weren't a problem in the Indo-Pacific region, we have not done that much research onto how to control this problem. But like a lot of conservation issues, uh, us as humans can do a lot to help with this. And this problem um, is really ramping up and it's not going to stop anytime soon. After um, this started becoming a problem in the 80s. It has been studied ever since, and it is said that the spread will not stop here, and that the studies suggest that the lionfish invasion is not stopping anytime soon. So if anything, the numbers are growing, and the range of where this problem is occurring is spreading um, even larger. So. The sooner that we can learn about this problem and try and stop it, the better. And there are actually a lot of fun ideas that you can help with this problem from your home. And I'm here to tell you about all the things that you can do to help keep the lionfish population down and help these uh, coral reefs thrive in the ocean. So here we go. So what is being done about this problem? So there are actually a number of things that you can do to help out with this problem, especially if you're a diver and things that you can even do at home. Some things that, that divers are doing are setting traps in deep water to trap these guys and just kill them off. <laughs> Another one is sentencing divers to go out and hunt for them, which seems really fun. They are called lionfish derbies. Uh, there are a lot in Florida that you can go to and they seem really fun. You just get your spear and you just stab them and try and catch as many as you can. And then afterward, they have a large barbecue or cookout where you can eat the lionfish. So it seems really fun. So a really effective strategy, I think, is lionfish as a food campaign. And I've seen that Whole Foods is starting to sell lionfish in their fish section. I've looked online to show you guys on the Whole Foods website. They have a section about selling their lionfish and how this is beneficial to coral reefs ecosystems. Check it out on their website. They have really good recipes on there too. They have a number of recipes and how to cook lionfish. And they have this one, it looks really good, coconut curried lionfish. Lionfish has a firm white flesh that is slightly buttery in taste. It has been resembled to grouper or mahi-mahi. 
sounds really good. I've never tried it personally, but the next time I head to Florida, I will definitely try this at a restaurant. They sell them at a lot of restaurants down there. I usually go to Florida Keys when I go diving, so I know for sure they sell them a lot there. So another reason why I would eat lionfish is because this is a really great alternative to eating overfished populations. Some populations um, such as grouper and snapper are just, and tuna are just overfished and this one you don't have to feel bad about eating this at a restaurant and not knowing how it's being fished or, it's, or if it's being overfished. So I highly suggest that everyone tries it. It sounds really good. And don't worry, when they fillet this fish, all the venom is taken out. So you won't, you won't die. <laughs> now on to my favorite method, lionfish jewelry. I have recently purchased lionfish jewelry. I got these earrings, if you can see them. And I love them. They're really pretty. And they're actually lionfish spines. I got them off Etsy. I got them from Fusion Fins, and she makes all of her jewelry out of lionfish. This is a great way to raise awareness and support local businesses. So like if you're um, out and about and people say, where did you get your earrings or your necklace? You can be like, oh, it's actually lionfish scales. And they'll be like, what, what is that? Or why are you wearing that or something? <laughs> and you can tell them about this problem because uh, a lot of people don't know. The great thing about Fusion Fins is that 10% of her proceeds are donated to Whale Shark, an oceanic research center to help fund critical lionfish research and population control, which I think is awesome. And she even wrote me this handwritten card, um, which is just so sweet. That was really thoughtful and nice, and um, it just adds a little bit of personality to her jewelry, which I think is so cool. So those are mostly the things that you can do from your house. I'm just going to share two more things that um, experts are doing. In 2015, NOAA teamed up with the Gulf and Caribbean Fisheries Institute to set up Lionfish Portal online so that they can provide scientifically accurate information on this invasion and its impacts. Um, a lot with scientific research really consolidating everything into one space, it makes everything easier to communicate and easier to compare to find out what is the most accurate numbers. Um, another thing that they're doing which I think is really cool is training top predators to eat lionfish like us <laughs> but I'll put a video in my description box of a really cool video of them spearing lionfish and they try and feed it to sharks and grouper and mutton snapper and they um, seem to like it so let's hope this works all footage in this video today are credited to Lisa Bond and her spectacular company. Thank you so much for letting me use your footage today. Thank you guys so much for watching Conservation Chick. Please comment any ideas that you think you're going to incorporate into your life to living a more ocean-friendly lifestyle and staying ocean-minded. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to hear more videos about staying ocean-minded, subscribe to my channel.